this is a special hour that we are going to address the Laodicean church, um, what it is in modern times, uh, how to recognize it, and how we can deal with it, because it is a <clears throat> issue that all of us need to be aware of and need to have some idea of how to deal with it. Susan and I have, uh, we have some thoughts and we're going to share those, but then we also want, um, we want to get feedback as well. We're not the experts in this. We are, um, we're in the river with all of you and um, uh, hopefully the things that we have to say will stimulate a discussion. So um, let us have, since we were just talking, um, let us have Shirley Zemko, why don't you open us up in prayer? Abba Father, we come before you thanking you and praising you for the invitation to come into your presence. We thank you and praise you this morning, Lord, for Fred and Sue, or this afternoon or this evening. And we thank you and praise you, God, for your goodness, for your mercy, and for your compelling love that draws us deeper still. And we ask this morning, Lord, that you would give Fred and Sue clarity of thought, that you would articulate their words, and Lord, that we would have ears to hear, hearts to receive, and a heart to obey. Lord, your word by your spirit. And Lord, open us up and give us a deeper revelation and understanding of the seriousness of what is being discussed, we pray in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Thank you so much, Shirley. Um, Susan Rao, do you have uh, introductory comments? And do you want to um, do you want to just read what uh, uh, what it says in the word uh, in Revelation about the Laodicean church? What well, hi, everyone. We are embarking on a special focus today um, and for this year on the Laodicean Church called the Laodicean Challenge. We will have varying messages on this church throughout the year. It is an important focus for this day and hour, as it may be in part keeping us what we believe from revival. And in studying this church, however, there are significant promises that are reaped in overcoming its challenges that are important for today and the present times. So let's start by reading what John relays in Revelation 3, 14 through 22. To the lukewarm church and to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, these things says the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the, of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Wow. Because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire that you may be rich and white garments that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant you to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father in, on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. So after studying this, this chapter, we went to um, the seven churches a few years ago, um, probably 2014, 2015, thereabouts. And um, so I'll be sharing a few, a few photos from it. But the Laodicean church, why is it last? Why is it the last one that John uh, presents and I, I believe after reading through this and studying it, 
it is one of the hardest challenges. And to every church in the uh, Revelation series on the churches, um, he says, I know your works and comes in different forms of care, but comes in different forms of character. So when he dives into the Laodicean church, the first thing he says uh, about it and presents himself is, I am the amen. Have you ever started a conversation with amen? It means that he really knows our works. Amen has seen it. The amen means that uh, surely, surely I see it. And the Laodicean church is introduced to himself as the amen. And then he goes on to say the faithful, the true witness, and the beginning of creation. In fact, you can't go any deeper than this. So it is a church that is um, a very significant church in that it is presents as the last church. All the other churches have certain promises to them, but the lukewarm church, we'll get this to this in a, in a minute, is a, a, has a very big promise at the very end. And I believe it's not by accident that it is the last church that John talks about. So what is, uh, how is the Laodicean church characterized? It is, first of all, it is a very wealthy city uh, during the Roman period. It's located on a major trade route. Let me just show you. So <clears throat> the Laodicean church here is on a trade route. And it was a trade city. It had uh, textiles. It was It was famous for its textiles. It was on the trade route between Ephesus, Smyrna, Sardis and Philadelphia. Have you heard of those? Have you heard of those cities in the seven churches? They're all in the seven churches. It was also associated with Hierapolis and Colossae. It, and um, additionally, it was the home of a medical school and was known for its treatment of eye problems. So here we go. This is how it, it looks today. This is Laodicea, it obviously had a large buildings and um, it was again, a center of the trade route for textiles. Very famous, very wealthy, very um, accomplished for its time and its season. It was also a place where there's famous eye cell um, that uh, was people came to Colossae for. It's associated with Hierapolis and it was a source of hot mineral waters that was known for its healing. So it had a type of medical school there for that time. <clears throat> and um, it, so here uh, is the setting for a very productive, a very uh, wealthy community. And um, in Revelation 3, the first verses, 15 and 16, says, I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Who wants to hear that? That's a horrible, horrible, striking things to say. But that's actually what happened when people drank the water of Laodicea. It would make them vomit. So um, <clears throat> verse 17 goes on to say the spiritual condition of Laodicea. It says, because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy and have need of nothing and do not know that you're rich and miserable, poor, blind and naked. Um, it, is a, it was a, a horrible thing to say. And it requires great contending to get over. And that's why I am bringing it up for this season. Um, Paul says in Colossians 2, 1, for I want you to know what great conflict I have for you with those in Laodicea. In other words, Paul was contending for a city that he had never been in. 
How many of us are contending for places that we have never been in? It requires a deep concern. It requires a, 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 a cry. And some of us, when we you know, have not been to Jerusalem, but yet we have cried over it and uh, our inner beings have been torn apart by it. That's the kind of condition that um, Paul is talking about. I have great conflict for you and those in Laodicea and for as many as have not seen seen my face in the flesh he was never in Laodicea and yet he was in great conflict over the city why that their hearts may be encouraged being knit together in love attaining to all the riches of the full assurance of understanding to the knowledge of the mystery of God both of the father and of Christ in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. That's the compassion. That's the cry of Paul contending for a very, very hard city. And he goes on to say in Colossians 4.13, for I bear him witness that he has a great zeal for you and those who are in Laodicea and those in Hierapolis. It gives you a picture of, it requires great contending to get through to the hardness of heart, the, the lukewarmness of a productive, wealthy community. Um, and if you aren't getting a picture of the times that we live in, I hope you are. It doesn't mean that if you're wealthy, you are lukewarm. In fact, we don't wanna deal with that kind of thinking at all. Some of the most wealthy people we know are the most generous and on fire committed Christians that we know. So we don't want to equate being poor with being more spiritual. That is not the case. But the more God gives, the more responsibility he gives, the more thankful and dependent we need to be on him for direction and good stewardship of what he has given. As God grants us more, it requires a deeper commitment. That is the message of the Laodicean church. Let us not become lazy when we have been given more. So how do we stay on fire for the Lord in the midst of a lot of uh, affluence or uh, a lot of things going our way? That's when, and when easy streets get really easy. How do we keep from going easy on that easy street and going more towards what God wants us to do and keep our hearts fully committed to him? John gives us the key. He, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments, that you may be clothed. That's Revelation 3.18. Um, so what does that look like? Well, how do we buy gold refined in the fire? Well, when we are in the fire of trials and tribulation, our character is refined in the purifying test that God gives us. First Timothy 6, there's a number of scriptures that speak to this, but First Timothy 6.18 says, let them do good, that they may be rich in good works, ready to give, willing to share, storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. First Peter 1.7, so that the proof of your faith being more precious than gold, which perishes, perishes, though tested by fire, may be found in and result in praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. A few years ago, before we went forward with the watch at a greater level, we were tested in a fire that I would not want to go through again, nor would I wish upon anyone. But as I look back, it, is a, it was a reservoir of gold for my life. It helped birth wisdom and understanding on how to present things, who to talk with, who not to talk with, and how to nurture things forward in a, in a godly way that stewards his purposes and secures his vision and pathway forward. Without those trials, I would not have that understanding today. And in the midst of them, God teaches us his way. He refines our understanding and purifies the, the vision and the, that spiritual gold that 
and no one can take away. It's yours forever. And such gold enriches our lives in so many ways and how we talk with each other, how we talk to ourselves. And so that we can be effective witnesses in days of increasing adversity, we can be the gold bearers for others and um, have that light within us that will give the hope to others around us. That is the goal that God wants us to have as we continue our to contend our way out of the Laodicean way. Um, John also goes on to say, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, therefore be zealous and repent. Repentance is very, very key. So how, what happens when we repent? We get out of our old clothes, we get about, out of our own old minds, just the things that we clothe ourselves in, patterns of thinking go away and we grab on new mindsets um, and we wear white garments. Back then, apparently most of the garments people wore were black, but God wants us to take on new garments. In Revelation 19, 8, guess what it is? It was given to her, the bride, to clothe herself in fine linen, bright and clean, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. What is in this church that Jesus is after? He's after the bride. He wants us to get out of the filthy rags that the enemy wants to keep us in. It is the bride that he is creating. The Laodicean church has a key to bring forth the bride. That is why it is the last church that is uh, mentioned by John. So today there is a distinct danger of satisfying afflicted souls with the things of this world, going shopping, going, going to the movies and doing all these things that can distract us away from our relationship with God. That is the pull of the Laodicean church. Um, it will provide superficial comfort, and there's nothing wrong with socializing. All of that is important. We need to have our, our community and engage with that. But if it, it takes the place of our, our intimacy with the Lord, it will not yield the eternal fruit of the spirit that Jesus wants for us and is working through us. So such uh, superficial comfort of things can affect both the rich and the poor, all of us. We're all affected by that in today's culture. It is an issue, the issue that this, the Laodicean church brings to the fore is the, the issue of our heart. Where is our heart at? So God wants us to get us out of the filthy black garments and into those white garments of his bride. If people overcome the enticement of worldly ways, the black rags of that, Complacency can get us into self-satisfaction, the superficial pleasures of material things and by riches that come from enduring trials, being generous and giving, thoughtful, leaning into the Lord in all of our ways, being self-serving, self, uh, serving others, allowing God to hone his character and nature within us. He will give us the treasures of heaven. The preparation of the bride is underway. And you know what? The Laodicean church is very much a part of it. Overcoming, the Laodicean overcoming church is a vital part of the bride that is to come. Jesus is knocking at the door. He desires intimacy with us. If we open the door, and, and the promise to the Laodicean church is that, guess what? He will come in and eat and dine with us. That is a picture of intimacy with Jesus. He will give us the wisdom, love, revelation, all that we need for life and health and godliness will be ours. So the fruit of the overcoming Laodicean church, we get to dine with him and eat with him. He was drawing us. He is knocking at the door of the church today. Come, come. I must show you things to come. Come in and dine with me. Eat with me because 
I will give you all the treasures of heaven to deal with the things that are coming upon the earth. No other church is offered such an opportunity. He who overcomes, guess what? He who overcomes, he invites in, and I will come in and dine with him. That is an intimacy with the Lord. And not only that, it is a key to I will grant to sit with me on my throne. Those are mighty promises of the overcoming Laodicean church. None of the other churches have that opportunity. So my, my point is, is that this church carries a challenge of being can, can, staying locked into our filthy rags because it's satisfying. But when we overcome those riches the, that, uh, of the um, Laodicean church, when we overcome them, when we uh, press into our afflictions, when we press into that which concerns us, when we allow our hearts to be rent, the promise is real. And the very real challenge of the overcoming church is the birth of the bride. So, Fred, I'm turning it over to you and your thoughts. Yes, that is really, um, that's really good, dear. It's really important. And to give the, the background of what, of what Laodicea was as a city, that they were, that they were wealthy. The temptation is to say, um, I did this myself and I'm the, you know, I'm the master of my fate. I'm the captain of my soul. I'm the, uh, I'm the one who, um, who can do, you know, whatever is needed. And, um, and the temptation is because our world, worldly circumstances are not desperate, but there are, um, there may be anywhere from, um, moderately to very uh good um in terms of just getting along day to day it's very easy the temptation is to feel that we don't need god and um uh and it's it's a corollary of jenny hager's message on you know that success is um one of the most dangerous things that we can have in the christian walk um so the question is, I think we all know this, and we're not saying anything that, that everybody doesn't know, but it's important to point it out because it's, it's, a, it's a major issue in the church in the end times. So how, the question is this, how do we overcome uh, the Laodicean spirit in our own lives? And then how do we help others get out of the Laodicean mentality? Those are the, the, key, the core questions. And the answer, I believe, and it's right there in the um, in this passage on the Laodicean church, is walking in intimacy with the Lord. Um, this means, what does this mean? It means walking in his presence, and it means immersing ourselves and meditating on his word. Um, the, you know, the, the true worshipers, the time is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in what? In spirit and in truth. That's walking in his presence and meditating on his word. And it also means not just doing this on our own, but developing a community and being a part of a community where others are doing the same thing, who are like-minded, so that we can constantly be spurring one another on towards love and good deeds, Hebrews 10, 24. And this is, of course, what one of the things that we're really emphasizing in the watch, that we're not just individuals seeking the Lord, but we are a community seeking the Lord together. So the, you know, the, my uh, thesis on this is that it's impossible to be in the presence of the Lord and remain lukewarm. There's just no way that that's going to happen. And um, uh, because when we are in his presence, when we're walking in intimacy with him, he's sharing his heart with us and his heart is anything but lukewarm. And, um, uh, we're also, when we're walking with the Lord, we're not only sensing his heart, but we're a lot more clear about what our eternal purpose is. 
in him of what part of the great commission that we have which is which is really our assignment on earth is the great commission um fred, fred i i just wanted to i'm sorry if i interrupted you but i think that there's something that you and i can bring forward here because we've been through it we've been through medical school and we know the mindset that comes out of that that um it, you know it's a grueling it's a grueling um training but uh people that come out of that you can you can kind of think that you know everything well and, and you're and you're and you're trained you're you're trained to be confident that even when yeah. you don't have the full answer that you can get the full answer yeah and, that's a good way of putting and, it and that's great for medicine it's not great for the kingdom it's the but, opposite of, of humility really and it's interesting though that this was uh, what Laodicea was noted for and but the he overcomes i can actually say that um we uh became more solid christians <laughs> in medical school because we were challenged and we kept pressing it we had to press into the lord to make it through yeah. so i'm not i'm not putting a nix over um med medicine and your doctors please don't don't ever say that because we saw miracles in our practice to and yeah. gave glory to the Lord. But um, there is a tendency uh, in the wor worldly sense that you can start thinking the exactly the Laodicean way, like you need nothing, you got it all. Yeah, yeah, amen. So when we're walking with the Lord, we're clear about our purpose in him, uh, we'll never be lukewarm. We will um, have his heart also for everyone that's not working, walking in the fullness of what he has for them, because we'll see that. Um, so, you know, how do we help others? Um, so how do we help ourselves? We're walking in intimacy with the Lord. How do we help others? We bring them, we help them to go into that place of intimacy with the Lord. How do we do that? We bring the presence of God with us wherever we go. And we're bring, we bring them, we, we, by the the power of the holy spirit we're helping to bring them to a place where they have an encounter with the lord and we're bringing the kingdom of god to them so um so this is not the full answer it's a partial answer but this is meant to um to stimulate every one of you is that um <clears throat> it's staying out of the laodicean spirit we have to live it out we can't just it's not just an intellectual exercise we need to be living in the presence of God. And uh, uh, for other people, there's a blindness that comes over, over people. It's a spirit um, and only God can remove that spirit. So that's why prayer is so important. Um, and it is our actions, not just our words. That was just a, a confirmation. And uh, <clears throat> another person said that as a leader, you can't bring people into a place where you have not gone. So we are, we have to have integrity in terms of walking in intimacy with the Lord if we're going to lead other people into intimacy. That's not something that you can can fake or pretend or or preach if you're not walking in it. Um, and then uh, um, <clears throat> people are are comfortable oftentimes doing church, but you, they can be comfortable doing church, but not really walking in intimacy with him. And um, and there is a big difference here. And, you know, we can all see it and uh um and it is uh as was mentioned in other groups there is a, there's a process involved so we have to be patient with that so um okay that wraps it up sue for the breakout rooms do you have any final comments before you we close uh just a final comment uh, first of all thank you all for joining in on this we are going to be looking into this deeper as we go forward into you'll be getting another message um, next week on the USA watch um, but I was just thinking it'd be good to just look at the seven churches in your own quiet time but the dead church and the lay the lukewarm church were the two churches that the Lord said wear white garments 
when we're delivered out of the dead church, when we're delivered out of and overcome the Laodicean church, we are becoming the bride. Amen. And the Laodicean church, that which we face today, I think on a large part, we get the opportunity when we overcome our own laziness, our own complacency, our own lukewarmness, we get to dine with him and sit on his throne. Amen. Or sit with him on his throne. Nobody sits on his throne. Um, but I would, I've also just been thinking in Daniel, and let me just put this here in front of your eyes. Daniel 12, 4. But you, Daniel, shut up the words, seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. And um, <clears throat> I believe we're at that time, and that seal is being broken. And the invitation is to come up here because there's a wealth of revelation. There's new garments he wants to clothe us with for the, the times that we're in. Okay. That's the power of overcoming this. Thank you, dear.